On this channel, we get a lot of mail, as well as a lot of questions asked of us through Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. And we're asked a pretty wide gamut of questions, ranging from our views on particular electric cars and purchase strategies, through to pleas for us to make a particular video, cover one topic or another, or dispel a myth. Today, we're going to do the latter, although also answering several people who have written to us asking variations on the same topic. Electric cars have massive motors in them. Motors produce electromagnetic radiation. So people are asking, are electric cars actually safe to ride and drive in, or do they pose some kind of form of health hazard? Moreover, this is a related question, is it safe for someone with a pacemaker or implanted cardiac defibrillator, or ICD, to ride and or drive in an electric car? This particular fear has been banded around for years, but thanks to science, we have an answer. Let's deal with the concern first, though, and where it comes from. Electromagnetic radiation, everything from X-rays through to radio waves, sunlight and infrared, carries a certain amount of energy. That energy can be transferred to other things when the radiation comes into contact with it. X-rays, for example, allow us to see inside our bodies. X-rays can pass through soft tissue like skin, but not through our bones, which causes our bones to create shadows on X-ray plates that correspond to how much radiation has, or rather hasn't, got to the X-ray plate behind. Radios operate by tuning their receivers to a specific frequency of electromagnetic radiation. And of course, without electromagnetic radiation, electric motors wouldn't turn because it's the electromagnetic field created by passing electricity through one set of wires in the motor that caused the motor to turn, either by inducing a second current in a second set of wires or through the interaction of magnets with that primary magnetic field. But as is often the case, this concern is a case of knowing a little about something rather than really knowing more, because not all electromagnetic radiation is created equal. High energy forms of radiation, things like cosmic rays, x-rays and gamma rays, have a huge amount of energy, and they are what's called ionizing radiation. They have enough energy to strip electrons away from the atoms or molecules that those electrons are orbiting. Non-ionizing radiation doesn't have enough energy to strip those electrons from the atoms they're orbiting. Ionizing radiation can if exposed for long enough, cause damage to living things. It's that kind of radiation that's released when there's a nuclear power station meltdown, or when a star goes supernova. If you went up into space, you'd find a lot of high energy radiation, which is one reason why we tend to restrict the amount of time that astronauts spend in space. But here on Earth, the planet's magnetic field shields us from most of the nasty stuff. Electric motors, even those in a Tesla, produce non-ionizing radiation. In the grand scheme of things, while that's more than enough to pin you in the back of your seat when you're accelerating, it's not going to be anywhere near powerful enough to damage living tissue. Although, if you are exposed to super large doses of it for super long periods of time, well, it can have an effect. And we're talking insane amounts, more than you get in a car. Back in 2014, a study led by an independent research organization in Trondheim, Norway, and involving scientists from seven different countries, examined the electromagnetic radiation produced by seven different electric cars, one hydrogen fuel cell electric car, two gasoline cars, and one diesel car. They showed that exposure to non-ionizing radiation in an EV was less than one-fifth of the limit recommended by the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Projection. Yeah, there's a commission for that. The most radiation was, unsurprisingly, detected at floor level, just above the battery pack, with a small spike in radiation when the car was turned on. However, all of this radiation was still way, way, way below official limits. In short, then, you don't have to worry. And what if you've got a pacemaker or other implanted device? Well, you don't have to worry there too. The electromagnetic radiation produced by your car, about the same as it would be for most gasoline vehicles, is nowhere near powerful enough to set off your ICD or pacemaker. Large DC quick charging stations do sometimes have warnings on them about pacemakers, but again, 
They're largely precautionary for older charging stations that use massive induction coils, and they're pretty rare today. Even if you find one with a warning sticker on it, plugging in and pressing the start button before stepping back isn't going to cause you any problems. Still don't believe me? I previously used to have an implanted loop recorder and I drive and charge electric cars without any problems. My late sister had an ICD and she rode in my electric car plenty. And I recently gave my mum a ride in a Tesla when I was in the UK. She also has a pacemaker without her needing to go to the emergency room. So the next time someone says electric cars can damage your health, you know how to set them straight. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you liked it or you didn't like it below. Scribble a comment, hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you'd like to help us make more of these videos, why not send a dollar or two our way every month through Patreon, buy us a coffee through Ko-fi, or visit our t-shirt and other merch at our merch store. I'll be back soon with another episode, but until then, keep evolving!